Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, there are so many goddamn beautiful stories out there in the universe, you just really have to know where to go looking for them. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because, let's face it, you're listening right now. Uh, subscribe! Hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. Give us the old five-star rating. And uh, subscribe basically on your podcast platform of choice. We're pretty much everywhere over at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. It's pretty much across the board. And we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In the Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook. We're on the Twitter. We're on the Instagram. We're on the TikTok, and we're on the letterbox for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, I say it a lot, but it's true. Uh, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of f- television, film, basically the moving image at large. Because you know what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please pay us a visit. On this episode, we got a good one. We got another gem that is available streaming now on the Apple TV Plus service. It is Little America, and recently Season 2 dropped. Yeah, It's inspired by the true stories that uh, were, were featured by Epic Magazine in a series called Little America. And it goes beyond the headlines to look at sort of the funny, romantic, heartfelt, inspiring, and surprising stories of immigrants in America, which let's face it, are now more relevant than ever. In advance of the launch of Season 2, we got the chance to talk with uh, one of the showrunners, uh, the one and only Shion Hedder, who you would know from also not only this show, but the Academy Award-winning CODA, which is also available on the streaming service, which, again, I do cannot recommend highly enough. But uh, we talked with Sean about... Uh, just getting into season two and sort of the importance of uh, of telling these stories, especially on a platform like this, because I mean, again, these aren't stories that hit the the narrative beats that you would expect. They're they're very honest. They're very unique, and uh, it's a brilliant little piece of television, which I cannot recommend highly enough. Which, like I said, is available now. Both seasons on the Apple TV, uh, Apple Plus TV, Apple. TV Plus streaming service. Uh, so if you don't already have it, go sign up for that now. But first, en- enjoy our talk with Sean Hedder, because between you and me, it is a darn good one. Well, Sean, obviously, first off, just thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate this. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for talking with me. No, I mean, congratulations on the show. I mean, I was so ha- happy when I heard a second season got, you know, greenlit ready to go and i mean i think for me just in watching the show i appreciated that it was anthology and it wasn't trying to sort of shoehorn these stories into any kind of narrative series because that might have felt a little hokey like for you what was the draw like like walk me through sort of the initial days of of getting pitched to sort of be involved with the with this show well i think one of the things that just personally for me i felt very connected i have immigrant parents they both have very different stories of coming to this country. You know, my dad was a refugee fleeing the Hungarian revolution, came with his family with one backpack, you know, escaping Hungary. My mom came from Wales and came to go to art school, you know, because she felt like she was limited in Wales, you know, and wanted to be an artist and needed to be here for that reason. So I think one of the things that drew me to the show is they're both really valid stories and reasons for coming here and they're vastly different. And when we were making first season, we were making it at a time, you know, we were in the middle of the Trump era and there was so much anti-immigrant rhetoric and sentiment and the idea of lumping immigrants together as 
this one giant group of people that was somehow had become the enemy in the political narrative was so absurd that part of the anthology was like, let's break this down and let's look at the fact that these are individuals and people and everyone has a story that is specific and different. And let's honor that tapestry because that's what this entire country is built on. So let's break this down out of some monolithic, ridiculous idea of a group and break it down into individual stories. So that's the thing that drew me initially. And then also just, it's so fun to be able to do like eight little movies a season and getting to really let each one be totally different, have a different tone, have a different style, you know, and let the story organically lead to the way that it's told, you know, and we do that through interviewing our subjects over and over again. They don't always know the story that we're telling. You know, I think everyone has an idea about their life and what is interesting about their life. It's almost never the story we end up telling. <laughs> so I think it takes multiple interviews also because everybody, our subjects often like present something at first that they they think is going to be our story. And then it's only on conversation number four or five that we finally get to the thing that we want to tell the story about. So that process is cool. It's like we're writers, but we're also investigative journalists. Well, I mean, I've got to imagine that's probably one of the most rewarding parts because, I mean, obviously there is such a diverse sort of swath of stories, but at the same time, it's these aren't eight little movies that are sort of hitting any plot points or hitting any sort of stereotypical beats kind of thing. Like for you, how is it for you? I mean, I would imagine the entire team to sort of be assembling something that can work separately, but also can work as part of the anthology as well. Well, what I, that's the most challenging and fun. I mean, there's a lot of challenging parts of this show, trying to make an anthology, trying to make eight movies on an episodic TV schedule is actually insane. And every season we're like, oh my God, this is the hardest thing we've ever done. Um, but, you know, I, I co-show run the show with Lee Eisenberg, and I think we have a room full of incredible writers. And a lot of what we're doing is like looking at these interviews and going like, what is the story here? Like there's what happened, but it, we're not interested in what happened. We're interested in like, what's the bigger conversation this is starting or what are the themes or what's the central relationship in this that is the most interesting. So some of the process is just wild. I mean, we had a story that we, we actually started writing first season. We kind of kept circling it. It was the kiss a car episode. And it's about this young Sri Lankan woman that en enters an endurance contest to keep her lips on a car for the longest amount of time. And then, you know, whoever is the last person wins the car. So it was quirky and interesting, but we're like, that's not a story. Like, what's the story? And really, the more that we talked to her, and it took two seasons to break this episode, because what we had to finally land on is like her father was such a central figure for her and this feeling that she had failed, that he had come to this country with all of these expectations um, of, you know, and sacrificed everything, you know, was an engineer in Sri Lanka and was working as a janitor at her high school. And the expectation was this was all for her so she could succeed. And meanwhile, she was wayward and didn't know what she wanted to do and had dropped out of college and felt like she completely let down her family and suddenly we're drawing a connection that might she might not have ever drawn which is like oh we think that this kiss a car contest was your chance at redemption we think that you felt that if you won this contest you would be redeemed in the eyes of your parents so sometimes it's like we're almost doing therapy on our subjects that maybe they haven't done on themselves or maybe they have done but it's like we're through all these conversations, drawing these connections um, and really trying to see which stories rise to the top as being resonant, not just as little half hour episodes, but as starting broader conversations about generational expectations or what it means to have immigrant parents that expect you to be, you know, the shining light to fulfill all the dreams of coming to this country. And what happens when that pressure is too much and kind of makes you capsize in your own life. So it's just a wild journey. I've never worked on anything quite like it. It's very fulfilling and it's very challenging and, um, it, but it's a pretty cool process. Well, and I mean, I've got to imagine just the whole, just being the show, being a showrunner, like you're not, 
especially on something like this, because you're not overseeing one arc, you're seeing over multiple little arcs. And I mean, it's I've got to imagine it's a different kind of creative reward on something like that, just to, if only to juggle all those balls at the same time. Well, it's it's not easy to get an audience invested in a character and emotionally connected to a story that you're only involved in for a half an hour and then do right. it every single time. So when you're writing a, you know, a normal episodic show, you're kind of like, okay, well, maybe this character's playing in the background and then episode five, they finally have a moment and then you're more interested in that character. I mean, this part of it is just really trying to create, like, how do you immediately identify with your lead character? How do you get invested in the story immediately? And and usually that's through specificity. Like, we're just finding that the, the detail of the show, the fact that, um, you know, everything from our production design to our costume design to all of that is just really trying to put you in a world and time and place with this individual so that you really get as much information as you can about them in a short amount of time. Did uh, did doing your own episode in in season one help sort of inform you going forward to sort of as you as you guys craft the show? Well, I think one of the really fun things about the show is that our directors have so much freedom and autonomy because it really is like making a little movie. It doesn't need to connect to anything else. And so one of the things I loved first season is it was, you know, granted I was also the showrunner, so nobody was bossing me around. I was allowed to allowed to do what I wanted. Um, but at the same time, we really do that with our directors. I mean, we really allow them to come in with a vision and almost make a little movie um, with some guidance. But but mostly, you know, we're choosing our directors because they have uh, kind of an auteur like vision for what they want to do with their episode. Um, and that's really fun because they end up having different tones and different feelings. And I think it, you get to be surprised, you know, there's enough aesthetically in the show that it all feels of a piece, but at the same time, each episode feels like its own thing um, and getting to step into a different world with somebody else. Well, I mean, I agree with that 100. percent I mean, I'm so glad you guys have the the platform that you do with Apple to to be able to share these stories with the world because it doesn't feel like it would have worked anywhere else. It's such a fantastic piece of work, and just again, thank you so much for the time and congrats. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Watch the show, everybody. <laughs> well, absolutely. <laughs> and don't forget to to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.